a couple of months ago I built my first musical instrument, this ukulele, and it turned out much better than I expected and I enjoyed making it. So I was feeling adventurous and I decided to try and make an electric guitar. And well, here it is. As usual I made this entirely from salvaged wood. The body is made from a slab of oak that was donated to me recently. It's made up of two pieces glued together. You can see the join there. The neck is made from oak too. This came from some salvaged hat and coke stands that came from a local office clearance. This is made up of three pieces in total. There are two along the length of the neck and an extra piece here on the headstock. The fretboard is made from sapili, left over from the ukulele build. The fret markers are made from offcuts of oak. And these side dots are made from cocktail sticks. Oak isn't typically used to make guitars. There's a lot of debate about which wood types are good for tone. But there's also a lot of people who'll tell you that it's more about the pickups in the guitar than anything else. And you'll see at the end of this series of videos, without giving too much away, that it actually sounds pretty good, to my ears anyway. Oak is also a really heavy wood, but to be honest, this guitar hasn't turned out much heavier than my other guitar, a Japanese Fender Telecaster. Speaking of the Telecaster, I used it a lot throughout the build just as a reference to help me with some of the dimensions for the design. It didn't really appeal to me to make a Stratocaster or a Les Paul or some other well-known guitar design using templates. I wanted to create something original and different and that's what I did. I just want to make it clear that I'm not a professional luthier, I'm not even a professional woodworker, I'm just a bloke in a shed at the weekend with some good tools and some not so good tools. You'll see that I make a few mistakes and misjudgments throughout the build, but for me that's all part of the learning experience. So here's the first part in this series of videos. I hope you enjoy watching them and I look forward to hearing what you think. I'd use oak to make the neck. This oak came from some reclaimed hat and coat stands that I salvaged from a local office clearance. I cut two lengths to 670mm on the mitre saw then I ran them through the thickness planer to remove the finish and the bevelled edges and get them straightened up. After that with the two pieces at around 28mm thick I glued and clamped the pieces together. Once the glue had dried, I jointed one side to clean up the glue joint and straighten out one face. and then I put it through the thickness planer to clean up the other face and square it up. I was left with a workpiece around 25mm thick. Next I marked up where the nut would be placed on the neck, allowing about 170mm between the end of the workpiece and the nut for the headstock. I positioned the nut in the centre of the neck using a combination square and marked up either side of the nut to indicate the width of the neck at the nut, which was 44mm. Then I marked up where the neck would meet the body, where the width of the neck would be 55mm. I marked this up and then I could join the marks to give me a tapered shape for the neck. I also marked up a line down the very centre of the neck, using the glue joint to find the centre. I bought a truss rod from eBay and I need to cut out a slot in the centre of the neck for the truss rod to sit in. I first marked up where the end of the truss rod would be so that the allen key adjustment would protrude at the headstock end of the neck. 
I used calipers to measure the height of the truss rod, which was 9.42 millimeters. So this is the height I needed my blade to be set at. I used the calipers again to set the blade height to that measurement. The truss rod was just under 6mm wide and the kerf of my table saw blade is 3mm, so I figured I'd need to make two passes down the centre of the neck, one pass on each side of the centre line. So I first carefully positioned my fence so that the blade would cut one side of the centre line. To cut the slot to the exact length of the truss rod, I used a sharpie pen to mark up on the table saw's table where the workpiece would need to move from and to in order to get the blade to cut the slot to the correct length. The first mark I made represented a pivot point where the end of the workpiece would need to be lowered onto the blade to be level with roughly where the nut would be. The second mark represented where the other end of the workpiece would be for the blade to cut the slot to the correct length. I first had to remove the riving knife. I don't recommend anyone attempting this sort of thing unless you're totally confident and comfortable with your tools. I was very careful here and I took my time and I'm totally aware of the risks associated with making this cut. Next I could adjust the fence to position the blade on the other side of the centre line and make the second pass in the same way as I had previously. At first the slot was too narrow to accept the truss rod, which was a good thing as it meant I could make the slot wider to achieve a tight fit. The slot measured 5.32mm and the truss rod 5.82mm, so I'd need an extra half a millimetre for the truss rod to fit. Because the table saw blade is curved, I had to use a chisel to square up the end of the cut and get the slot to the right depth. The other end of the truss rod where the allen key adjustment was, was a little bit wider than the rest of the rod, so I marked up around it with a pencil and chiselled out the excess. To widen the slot, I used some 40 grit sandpaper folded in half. I ended up wrapping this sandpaper around my table saw riving knife to give me some extra thickness so that I could sand both sides of the slot at once. And eventually the truss rod slotted in there nicely and it was a good snug fit. I bought these six inline tuners on eBay. I measured the length of the shank with my calipers which was 15 and a half millimeters. So this was the thickness that my headstock would need to be. I set my bandsaw fence and trimmed the headstock to this thickness. Then I cut along the taper line I'd drawn on the neck to remove the excess material. I shaped the headstock curve on the belt sander. and cleaned up the truss rod end hole with a round file. Then I could start rounding over and shaping the neck. 
I started with a rasp file. Later I switched to using a spoke shave and I got quite good results with that. I did a bit of sanding too. and some shaping on the belt sander. And finally I used a freshly sharpened cabinet scraper to clean up the neck. 